<laughs> Joining us now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Very good to have you on the show this morning. Do, does the White House, are, are government officials ready to tell us what these objects were? They've got to have an idea. Thanks, Mika. B appreciate having, you, having me on here. Uh, we are going to continue to share as much information with the American people as we can as we learn more about uh, these objects. Um, the truth is that we haven't been able to gain access to the three that were shot down Friday, Saturday, and yesterday, uh, in large part because of the weather conditions. And, and the third one yesterday was shot down over Lake Huron, so it's underwater. So we're going to do everything we can to recover them. And as soon as we do that, we'll learn more about them, and we will absolutely share what we can learn with the American people. So, so Admiral, is, is there a possibility that these objects could be uh, from, uh, could, could they be commercial in nature? Could it be, could it be from, from a tech company that, that you know, yeah. you've got Google Earth and you've got other people that want to map out the entire Earth? Is that a possibility that you all are considering? Absolutely, Joe. I mean, there, there could be completely uh, b benign and, and totally explainable reasons for why these, these objects are flying around up there. Uh, certainly don't have to be nefarious at all. There are corporate entities that, that operate these kinds of things. There are academic research institutions that, that do this sort of thing. Uh, we just don't know. But as soon as we can find out, we can get the debris and we can find out, we'll absolutely share what we can. But, Admiral, talk about the danger for uh, a commercial airliner uh, going at a very high rate of speed at 40,000 feet, coming yeah. up on one of these things suddenly could take them down. That was one of the reasons why we took these actions over the last three days, Joe, because of the altitude that these things were flying and, this, and the size, which was very, very small. Compared to the Chinese spy balloon that we shot down a couple of weeks ago, uh, these were much smaller, and they were at altitudes of... Friday and Saturday's incident of 40,000 feet. Yesterday mm -hmm. it was much lower, at around 20,000 feet. So you can understand our concern with respect to civil air traffic there, because most civil air traffic is somewhere around 30,000 feet, at least for the ones that are flying across the continent. Uh, so that was, a, that was a real concern. John, it's Richard Haas. Have we had any communications here with any foreign governments? And do we have an interest in setting up any rules of the road about the use of these uh, sort of uh, balloons or anything else? Where do, where, where do we fit diplomatically on this? With respect to these three over the weekend, Richard, we have not had conversations with foreign governments other than, of course, our, our Canadian uh, allies to the north. Of course, uh, we coordinated with the shoot down on Saturday with them. Uh, but we have communicated to dozens of other countries about the Chinese spy balloon program, which is something we've been studying since we came into office and have learned uh, a lot more about that. And we know that they, those balloons have tra traversed uh, across uh, many different countries, across many different continents. And we have been reaching out to our allies and partners to many of those countries to let them know what we have learned about that. As for rules of the road, I mean, clearly we're going to continue to make sure uh, that we are monitoring our airspace as carefully as possible. And, and and we are also communicating publicly and privately uh, that we're going to defend that airspace. And if there's, a, if there's a, an object in that airspace that either poses a safety of flight risk, and these three certainly did, or poses a potential surveillance risk, we're going to take the action that we need to to defend our national security interests. But are we open to the idea of trying to get sort of a limit or ban on these? Or do we want to keep open some possibilities, for example, for our own use of balloons in certain circumstances? Well, to Joe's question, Richard, I mean, these these objects uh, can serve potentially. We'll know what these are when we get them up, but they could potentially serve valid, uh, completely benign purposes, whether it's scientific research or geographic mapping. I mean, it's not about banning these objects, uh, but it is about making clear what our airspace concerns are and, and making that obvious to, to everybody. Morning, Admiral. Jonathan uh, Lemire. Want to get your reaction to some breaking news out of Beijing just in the last hour or two. The foreign ministry there has accused the United States since the start of 2022 of flying balloons uh, 10 different times over Chinese airspace. Can you uh, respond to that accusation? Not true. Not doing it. Just absolutely not true. So the U.S., let me just push you a little further then. So the U.S. is not using these balloons technologies at all over China? That is right. We are not flying balloons uh, over China. That is absolutely true. Okay. And then lastly, then, just as will there be this, will that viewpoint be expressed directly to Beijing beyond here on the friendly confines of Morning Joe? Uh, when, when do the next conversation start between Washington and Beijing over a matter that's clearly inflaming tensions between the two countries? 
Well, two points there, Jonathan. First of all, we still have diplomatic relations with China. We still have an embassy there. It's not like all communications between us and the PRC have shut down. Uh, obviously, there are certain vehicles like military to military vehicles, which are not open to us right now, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but we do have the ability to communicate directly with the uh, Chinese leaders, and we have uh, in private settings about our concerns over that, uh, that spy balloon. <laughs> Just a vintage Kirby. Not true. No balloons. No balloons. The, the, well, the, the, the quote not is doing it. the quote is we we are not flying balloons over China. Okay. Uh, and and so uh, let, let's move from balloons and China and unidentified objects flying over the Great Lakes uh, to uh, the Russia Ukraine war. We're coming up on the one year uh, anniversary of, of the launch date. Things seem to be getting more grim by the moment. Uh, what is, uh, what is the White House's position? What, what's the Pentagon's position on where this war is going? It seems to be getting bloodier by the day. Yeah, Joe, especially up there in the Donbass around Bakhmut and that little town of Solodar, the, the fighting there is still very, very vicious. And what we expect to happen as the weather improves, uh, the Russians will want to go on the offense even more, perhaps along that southern front as well uh, in Kherson and around Zaporizhia, north of Crimea. So what we're going to do is make sure that we are continuing to provide security assistance to Ukraine so that when those conditions improve and when we expect the Russians to try to go on the offense, that the Ukrainians can better defend themselves. In fact, they'll have the opportunity to go on the offense if, if they uh, desire as well. We're sort of in a bit of a lull right now because of the weather. It's just not permissive for a lot of ground operations, uh, but we do expect that as the weather improves that the fighting will probably intensify, unfortunately. You know, it's, it's incredible that you and I are sitting here talking uh, about a year after this. I mean, nobody w would have expected that when this thing started that the Ukrainians would be able to fight as bravely and as skillfully uh, as they have, and certainly nobody wants to see this war go on another day, yet alone into another year. Mr. Putin could do the right thing, Joe. All he's got to do is pull his troops out of Ukraine, call it a day, and, and, and admit that the, this, is a, this is a folly. This is a failed effort of his. Uh, but unfortunately, he hasn't done that. In fact, he's doing the opposite. He's flying drones and cruise mm -hmm. missiles again into civilian infrastructure over the last 48, 72 hours, trying to, uh, trying to brutalize the Ukrainian people. And obviously, it's not going to work. And the, and the cause for the Russians themselves, absolutely horrific. We had James Stravitas on, Admiral Stravitas on earlier, talking about British intel estimates that the Russians are now losing, uh, casually-wise, 1,000 uh, Russian soldiers a week. What is the Pentagon's best estimate? What's the White House's best estimate for the number of casualties that have been inflicted upon the Russians over the past year? We're being careful not to put a hard number on it, Joe, but uh, clearly we know that they, they have suffered a lot of casualties, and we think it's certainly uh, tens of thousands, if not more, if you count wounded and injured on there. I mean, you don't have to look any further than what's going on in Bakhmut. They're throwing prisoners, convicts. They're taken out of prisons and throwing them into the battlefield without training, uh, without uh, without proper arms and ammunition. I mean, they're just throwing bodies at this fight, and now they're talking about potentially some other mobilization, which we'll have to see if that happens. All right, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House. Always great to have you on. Retired Rear Admiral John Kirby, thank you very Thanks. much. Good to I see you. you.